friends, let's talk a little bit about bar chords. I know it's an intimidating subject for a lot of people, even intermediate players like to avoid a lot of chords that have bars in them. But in the end, it's something you really do need to learn to fully unlock the potential of the instrument. It's going to make transposing so much easier. You won't need a capo anymore. And by learning one chord voicing, you end up really learning 12 for each of those singular ones. So it unlocks so much more on the instrument and will greatly advance your playing. And I know that it can be tough and some of the common problems are with technique and some are with the instrument themselves. So let's talk a little bit about it. The first thing I want to get out of the way is I, I generally shy away from ever blaming the instrument itself for a problem. But in the uke world, a lot of people are buying off Amazon or big box stores and they get instruments that are not properly set up by a luthier. There are a lot of great specialty dealers out there that do this and you get a very playable instrument out of the box. What happens is many of these inexpensive ukuleles are shipped really directly from the factory and they're about 75% of the way to playable, but those little tweaks haven't been done, which can be fine when you're playing the open position chords, but you'll find that it can be a lot tougher as we move up and down the neck if the instrument is not properly set up. The largest issue on ukes is that the nut, which is this little piece that the strings go across right here, is usually too high on a lot of instruments. You can see how close mine is to the fret. It's only about a business card or so, and that's what we want. If yours is higher than that, find a local luthier to fix this problem because it's going to make pressing down the strings so much harder and also throw the uke out of tune when you press down the strings, which is certainly an issue in bar chords or even open position. So find a local luthier. If, if you're unable to do that, it's actually something very simple that you can do um, with sandpaper yourself as long as the slots are properly filed. I mean, there's lots of great tutorials online on how to do that. I'm not a luthier, so I don't recommend that you do it yourself, but in a pinch, it is something that can be done at home with very simple tools. And that in and of itself might make playing bar chords about 50 times easier, especially if you have problems with the strength of pulling the strings down. Sometimes it's not your fault. You know, and that's something to keep in mind is it can be an issue with the setup of the instrument itself. Now, if the instrument is well set up, then there are probably some things in your playing and your technique that you really need to address. So the first key to bar chords is that when we are doing this, think of your first finger, which is generally what's doing the bar, as acting as a capo, or it's replacing the nut where the strings go over, so that we have essentially a zero fret wherever it is. Now, as with when we fret any note on the instrument. The easiest place to do this as far as pressing it down is as close to the fret as possible. So what I teach my students when we're learning bar chords is to actually do something that's a little bit counterintuitive. We usually talk about arching our fingers nicely and keeping a natural hand position. But when you're practicing bar chords initially, what I want you to do is take your first fingers, I said this is generally what will be used to play bar chords, and lay it directly on top of the fret. I'm gonna do this on the second fret for the moment. And you can see it's covering the fret, and we'll get muted notes. Now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to roll my wrist back, the littlest amount. See that tiny roll? Now suddenly all of the notes are coming out perfectly. If I put it back here, it's not nearly as easy. To keep it as close to the fret, you want to practice putting it flat on and then rolling it backwards to keep it as close to the fret as possible. The key is that we don't want to put in a lot of effort with this. We want it to be as easy as possible and therefore it will be as clean as possible. Now the second common mistake is the thumb placement. I see a lot of people that have the thumb sneaking over the side. You want it on the back of the neck, pretty much behind where the first finger is. But along with this comes one other thing. Whenever we're playing on the instrument, fretting any note, but especially bar chords, we are not clamping down with our fingers like this. That's not where the pressure comes from. If you do that, you're going to get very tired very fast because our fingers do not have these huge muscles in them that allow us to just press down strings as light as uke strings are. So what we really want to do is when we're holding our instrument, we've talked about this in previous videos, is actually the weight of your arm is what's pulling it down. And you can see I can play bar chords without my thumb on the back of the neck at all. The weight of my arm is what's pressing this down. I'm not pressing with the first finger. Again, the thumb is acting as a guide on the back of the neck, not as a clamp. And that's a very common mistake amongst beginners and intermediate players alike that you want to press down and you think that you have to press harder to get the bar cord out. But what's more important is actually using the correct part of your body to pull the cord as well as placing your first finger 
in the correct position so that it is easy to pull the cord out without a lot of effort. These shouldn't take a lot of effort when you are doing them correctly. Now the last thing is before you dive into doing all sorts of bar chords all up and down the neck, get very comfortable playing your minor seventh or major sixth bar chords, which is exactly the same if you think of an A minor seventh or this is a C sixth. Same thing, it would be straight across the neck. And you wanna practice going up the neck, getting nice clean notes out of each and every string. And sometimes you'll find that maybe your finger isn't quite flat. Maybe it's arched a little bit and you get a dead note in here. And that's going to be different on every uke as to how you have to position your finger across the fret. Mine happens to be right about at my second joint is where mine goes on this small instrument. But you might find that you need to reach a little bit further with your hand on your uke to make it comfortable. I hope this helped a little bit in bar chords and next week we'll dive more into different bar chord voicings and how we can use these to structure different harmonic vehicles that we've already been working on on some of my other videos. I'll see you all there.